Hey guys, welcome back to the Critical Care Survival Guide. One of the things that's changed in the last few weeks with COVID-19 is volume of patients. A couple weeks ago, we just had a handful. And as I was starting to see more and more patients come in, I thought to myself, how am I going to organize my thinking? How am I going to organize my planning on these patients so that I can be efficient, particularly as the volumes go up and up and up? Here are some strategies that I've discovered that really seem to work for me. When I first encounter a patient, I want to get the timeline. When did they first start having symptoms? I want to hear about known contacts because that will increase the likelihood that they have COVID-19. I want to know specifically if they have cough, short of breath, any GI symptoms. This loss of taste and smell is another interesting question I've been asking. Establishing the timeline helps me predict when they're going to become more and more critically ill, needing hospitalization or ICU care. After I've established the timeline and I've just made the decision to admit the patient, I need to decide how I'm going to adjust my plans each day. And I'm going to adjust those plans based on data. So what are the things I'm looking for? Well, for starters, I want to pay very close attention to their oxygen needs. Not only the FiO2 or the amount of oxygen they're getting, but also what's their respiratory rate. I've been paying particularly close attention to their FiO2 and their PaO2. The ratio, the P to F ratio as it's called, is an important way that you can see how someone's progressing with the disease. Ratios that are going up, the sign that the patient is improving. After I've looked at their oxygen, I want to get a better idea for their systemic inflammation. We know as COVID-19 gets worse, inflammatory markers go up. And studies are emerging showing that elevation in inflammatory markers may portend a worse prognosis. So some of the markers I'm watching in particular and ordering every day so I can pay attention to it include ferritin levels, C-reactive protein or CRP, their D-dimer level, their lymphocyte count specifically because patients with COVID-19 have low absolute lymphocyte counts. And I've noticed as they improve, those counts improve as well. In addition, I'm watching obviously their creatinine, their hemoglobin, and as you would on any patient every day, their eyes and nose I follow very strictly. As I go to round on the patients each day, I hear overnight how they did, how they responded in terms of their oxygen levels to interventions we may have done, such as say diuresis in the patient. I then glance at uh, their labs for the day, and I'm really looking for trends more than I'm looking for an absolute lab level of cutoff. So in other words, just because a ferritin level is 500 or a D-dimer is 3.5, doesn't necessarily mean that's a trigger for me to do something different. What I found more valuable is if I'm seeing all the inflammatory labs trending up, now I might be thinking this is somebody who's going to respond, let's say, to corticosteroids or a medication like tocilizumab, that's an anti-IL-6 agent, because they have the systemic inflammation. The D-dimer is another one that's important to me because as the D-dimer levels are going up, it's worrisome that these patients are going to be at risk for forming clots. So I may decide to uh, increase the strength of my DVT prophylaxis based on D-dimer levels, or potentially I'll go looking with upper and lower extremity ultrasounds to see if they have developed a clot. Finally, and very importantly, as you follow these trends, it's important to make note when you start an intervention, say corticosteroids, because if you see trends that now respond to that intervention, it'd be more encouraging of you to keep on doing that. Thanks again for watching the survival guide. I encourage you all to get organized every day because you're going to be seeing lots of high volumes as well. Please subscribe.